Thank you for joining us. If you do find yourself building your own vehicle on the Porsche Configurator, please post the build code below. You will be entered into a competition in order to win one of these special limited edition white tie cans. There's only so many left, and we're hoping to give them as many Porsche dreamers as possible. So once again, please leave your Porsche build code in the comments section below. Hi, I'm Colton here at Porsche Center Calgary, and I'm sitting here today in our fitting lounge, uh, which is a really cool space we have here at the dealership. Uh, and if you do pay us a visit in person, we can use this space to help you uh, configure your Porsche to kind of put your dream car together. As you can see behind me, we've got a bunch of color samples, interior samples, you can play with some of those combinations. Uh, we've got, um, ex sorry, samples of the various different trims available and some of the different pieces you can uh, kind of play with when you're configuring the car. As well in all these drawers, we've got even more color samples and even more stuff to play with. Uh, when you are building our cars, there can be quite a bit of complexity. There's a whole bunch of options uh, which can make your car really unique, right? With a lot of other brands out there, they kind of have their set packages and if somebody else has a car with the same package as you, well, you've, you've got the same car basically. Whereas um, because of the nature of how we order our vehicles, they tend to be a lot more individual, which is obviously great. You know, it's nice to have a more individual car, but it can be a little bit confusing, a little bit complicated when you're trying to put it together or compare one vehicle to the next. So uh, my goal here today is to simplify some of that process for you and to explain some of the kind of idiosyncrasies of our uh, car configurator. I think it is uh, the best car configurator on the market. It's an excellent tool, uh, but as I said, it can be a little bit confusing. So I'll try and run through uh, some of the kind of frequently asked questions and clarify some stuff. And uh, this will be kind of an introduction to the car configurator. And, and again, some of those little kind of quirks, and then we'll do some other videos where we go more in depth into kind of best practices or, or you know, the, the most intelligent way from, from one perspective or another to, uh, to put some of our, our models together. But uh, let's start with, uh, with just the basics. So if you come here, this is Porsche.ca. That's the place you want to start. And then over in the right hand corner, you have build your Porsche. So if we click on that, it'll open up this window here where we can select uh, the model. So you have 718s, which would be Caymans or Boxers, all the derivatives there. And then 911, uh, the Taycan, Panamera, McCann, and Cayenne. So uh, today we're going to build a Cayenne. And once we click on that, then it opens up to all of the um, Cayenne variants. So we have the regular Cayenne, we have the Cayenne in the Coupe body style, and then Cayenne E-Hybrid, E-Hybrid in the Coupe, uh, and so on. There are all kinds of different um, different Cayennes that all have their, uh, their benefits. Um, but for today, we're going to stick with just the regular Cayenne. That is the one we sell the most of. Uh, and for most people, it's the one that makes the most sense. So let's, let's go there. Okay, and as it loads up, we've got this uh, kind of digital representation of the car. It's quite accurate, actually. It looks pretty good. Uh, and then we've got all of our options on the right-hand side here. It's quite a lengthy thing, and that's where I was saying it can be a little confusing, a little intimidating, uh, but it doesn't have to be. It's, it's a really cool program uh, that works quite well. So um, starting off with your colors, you have your standard colors, black and white are there. There's no charge for those. Those are probably our two most popular colors. Uh, and then you have a selection of metallic colors. So black and white there as well for a bit of an upcharge. Those ones will be metallic, so they'll sparkle a little bit more in the sunlight. So you've got a selection of colors under that heading. And then these special colors. So those ones are a little bit pricier. Um, and just by virtue of that, fewer people select them. So they tend to be more rare colors. Uh, the chalk is uh, particularly popular lately. People seem to be really liking that one. The Carmine Red used to be available on the, on the Cayenne. Then they took it away for a couple of years and now it's back. And then we've got Lava Orange. Pretty exciting color, though few are brave enough to select it. And then the new uh, Cashmere Beige, which we haven't actually seen in person yet, uh, but it replaces the old uh, Palladium, which was um, kind of a deeper beige than this one. So uh, right now I will select the Carmine Red and uh, we'll, we'll scroll through here. So uh, the wheel section, you've got your standard wheel here, 19 inches, no cost. You can go up to this design here, still 19 inches and a minimal cost. Then as we go up from there, we get to a 20 inch uh, and so on. So you've got you know a couple of 21 inch options, all of these will be. And then when we get to this one, we're at 22 inches. Now what's significant about the 22 inches is those ones will always come with summer tires. There's no way around that. That's the only way the factory will, uh, will send them. However, on 21 inches or smaller, you can then open up this drop down and select 
whether you want the all season tires, but summer tires are default on everything. So you do have to come in here and tick that box telling Porsche, hey, no, I don't want the summers, I want the all seasons instead. So something to be cautious of when you're putting these, uh, these builds together. Um, and then another thing here is the colored center crest. So depending on the wheel, like this 21 inch, we'll have that already. So there's no need to tick that box. But on some of the smaller wheels, like this one, you notice it's just the black and silver crest there until you tick that box and then you get the full colored crest. Another thing worth mentioning is on these smaller wheels, you have this unpainted black piece in here versus when you go up to the 21s, then you get the colored wheel arch extension. Subtle thing, but it does have a visual impact. And then coming down to your interiors. So you have the standard interior in black or gray, zero charge there, or standard interior in black and beige for a minim minimal upcharge. Now, when they say standard interior, what you're getting there is you can still have leather on, uh, on the seating surfaces here, but uh, the dashboard and the doors will be a vinyl finish. Um, and that's what most people will go for. That's our most popular interior right there. But if we go down into these leather interiors, you're spending about $4,000 and you're not just getting leather on the seat, you're getting it everywhere. So your dashboard is then leather wrapped uh, on top and below, as well as your doors, armrests, everything is in smooth finished leather, uh, which is really nice. It definitely gives it a premium feel, but it's pretty pricey and the standard interior is just fine for, for most people. But when you do go to the leather, it opens up some more color options like the black and red or the gray and beige and the graphite blue and chalk, which is a particularly kind of striking option. Though I probably wouldn't do it with the red interior, though you can. That's a neat thing about Porsche. There's very minimal kind of um, exclusions where you have to match this combination with, with that, right? You can pretty much do whatever you like. Um, so that's your interiors and then your seats. A couple things to know there. So if I scroll over to here, the eight-way seat is the standard seats. This is what it looks like. Uh, you have you know adjustments for up and down, forward and back, and your recline angles. If we go to the 14-way seat, the seat looks almost exactly the same when I tick that box, but you get uh, position memory and you also get a uh, power thigh extension and four-way lumbar support. So that's the most popular seat that we sell. The other option is the 18-way. So when I tick this box, you'll see the seat changes quite a bit. This is a much sportier seat. The headrest is now integrated into the seat and you have much more pronounced bolstering on the shoulder here, the seat, the side of the seat, as well as the side of the seat base. Uh, and then those extra four adjustments are uh, variability in that uh, bolstering. So you can uh, press the button to wrap you that much tighter or you can loosen it out. So uh, that's a great seat. However, less popular primarily because it tends to be more difficult for people to get in and out of, particularly if you're less, uh, uh, if you're shorter. Uh, crawling over those bolsters can be a little bit inconvenient and they are prone to more wear than uh, the smaller bolsters on the 14-way seat. So that's why it's more popular, but um, you know, here is a, a great example of the more expensive option not necessarily being better, it's a matter of it being different and which one suits you better. And that um, really carries over to a lot of options in the configurator. There's a ton of cool stuff you can do to the car, but you don't have to tick a bunch of boxes to have a great car or have the one that's best for you. It's really about tailoring it uh, to your preferences. So those are uh, some important things to know about the seats. Then if we click here, stitching and seat centers. This is another one most people skip. Um, skip over, just don't see that it's there, but it can be pretty cool. Now, if we select this one, so interior package with contrasting stitching. If I tick that box, it'll open up and let me select a color for the stitching. Uh, most popular is probably guards red. So if I click that, it will Oh, sorry, it's because I already clicked the leather. What I was going to say is it forces you into the leather. So if we had a standard interior, let's try that again. And then I decided I wanted to add a contrasting stitch. I can select my color. And then it'll say you can do that, but in order to do the stitch, we do have to have the full leather interior in one of these color options. So your price to upgrade is actually a little bit more considerable than just the stitch. You have to pay for the stitch and for the full leather. So there are some limitations there. <clears throat> and then we get to packages. So uh, throughout the, um, the whole configurator here, you may have noticed these little black eyes. If you click on them, 
They'll explain what that option is about, or in this case with the packages, explain what you're actually getting inside that package. So most of our vehicles for, for inventory, we'll build with the, uh, with the Premium Plus package, uh, but you can do just a Premium, or you can do a Premium Plus, or you can do neither. Now, what I will generally recommend is don't tick the boxes to start. Uh, just scroll through the rest of the options, start selecting some things, and then when you're done, you can come back to this section, tick the box, and then it'll tell you what you're gaining compared to the way you've configured it and the cost difference. Because when you get the things in the package, um, the package pricing is a little bit better, but there might be some things you don't want. So do it without the package, and then come back and tick that box to see what the difference actually is. Um, and then we have the assistance package. So this has things that wouldn't be in either the premium or the premium plus. Uh, premium plus will have everything the premium has plus a few more. Uh, but the assistance package we're seeing more popular now than, than it ever was before with things like uh, night vision, surround view, and, and head up display, some options that we haven't had in the Cayenne. Um, but I'm gonna forego that for now. And if we look through the exterior section here briefly, um, so things like panoramic roof, most people are going to get that. It is in the packages, but for now I would take it just as one box. And then roof rails, so something important to note about those is that if you don't put them on from the factory, you can't retrofit them. They have to be put on uh, when the vehicle is being built. So you have the option to either put those on in the aluminum finish like this, or you can put them in black. And when you do that, it'll just force you to do the window surround in black as well, because obviously that would be an unpleasant contrast having the silver uh, window trim and then the um, the black roof rails so they force your hand there and then uh, scrolling through there as i said we won't do a, a full kind of in-depth uh, build today we'll, we'll put some other videos up for you uh, doing that um, but just to quickly run through you have uh, the sport design package that's going to change the aesthetics of the car quite a bit it's pricey but it has a pretty considerable visual impact and that's something that would be standard on a cayenne gts and that's why they look a little bit different um, and an important thing to consider on that note, when you're comparing you know, your, your standard pricing between say a Cayenne and a Cayenne Coupe or a Cayenne S versus a GTS, um, it's not just as simple as, okay, this one has more power or you know, is shaped differently, so I'm paying this much more. They'll also have a slightly different standard equipment load. So you wanna go through that to see what you're actually, uh, what that price difference is actually getting you. Um, but again, we'll dive more in depth into that when we uh, go through configurations on those cars. So um, some of the more kind of uh, unique things to look through, um, all this exterior stuff is pretty straightforward. You know, you, you, you tick the box and you get those, uh, those exterior touches. There's several things you can do back here with your badging. So you can do a delete and just get rid of the Cayenne portion and keep just Porsche. You can paint them body color, black, lots of things you can play with there. Um, but moving on to the performance section, so all of these cars will come with the 8-speed Tiptronic S transmission, so there is a box there, but it's always going to be ticked. And then we get into the um, things like adaptive air suspension, which will change your ride height and ride firmness. We wouldn't put that on too many Cayennes, but it's nice to have. Um, let's see what else is important to touch on here. Let's talk about the braking systems. So on a regular Cayenne, you'll have black brake calipers. When you go to the Cayenne S, you get silver ones. They're a little bit bigger. When you go to the GTS, you get red ones. And then you have these options here for the surface coated brake or the uh, ceramic brakes. So the surface coated brake, if we tick that, you'll see you get a much larger brake caliper and it's white. So of course you get larger, or sorry, you get better braking performance, but you also get with that is uh, virtually no brake dust, which is part of why they made them white to just show that it's, it's really clean uh, and um, it makes quite a visual impact, uh, but pricey at $4,000. Having said that, a much better price point than the carbon ceramics, which are about 10 grand and give you the yellow calipers, which are super cool, but can, uh, clash a little bit more with, with more color combinations. So I really like having that um, surface coated brake option now. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, scrolling down from there, headlights. So let's talk a little bit about those. You've got LED headlights as standard on the Cayenne now. This is what they look like. Um, so your first option is LED headlights, including the dynamic lighting system. So they are already LED. What you're adding here is the dynamic portion. So if I tick the box, they look a little different through here, but the headlights themselves, this part, uh, pretty well looks the same. But now they'll turn with the steering wheel, they'll look further down the road as you speed up, things like that. Um, but aesthetically, it's not a massive impact. 
Whereas if I click the LED matrix headlights, there is a considerable difference. And these ones are a little bit more advanced and they have the, uh, the high beam assistance. So it'll, you can leave your high beams on and as a car is coming down the other way, it'll turn off only the specific LEDs that are affecting that car while leaving the rest of them on. Uh, it's amazing for you know late night driving when it is dark out there. Uh, you just get maximum visibility all of the time. Really, really cool feature. Uh, and it's been quite popular since it, uh, it came out of the new Cayenne. And then through there, cupboard and assistance features. So head up display is a new feature. Um, $2,000 is a standalone option. We haven't seen the take rate too high, but if you really like it, it is finally available now. Uh, surround view camera, we're having quite a few people select that. I, I do like it, it's nice to have. Um, the night vision or night view assist, uh, also new. And to be honest, when it was first announced, I wasn't sure there was a ton of value in it, but in using it, it's actually very, very effective. Uh, and I would definitely recommend it if again, you do a lot of nighttime driving. Lane change assist, that's poor to speak for blind spot warning. So we'll put that in pretty well every car car that, uh, that we order for inventory. That's become a must have for most people. And then lane keep assist is the one that will tug the steering wheel to put you back in your lane if you've, uh, if you've left. And then we have adaptive cruise control. This is one that uh, wasn't very commonly selected on our cars as recently as a couple of years ago, but now pretty well everybody wants it. So the majority of our inventory will have it. And then there is now as well. It's going down from there. Uh, let's go into some stuff in the uh, assistant system portion. Uh, so head up display is new for us. Um, about a $2,000 option. We haven't seen a huge take rate on it, but for those who like to have it or have had it before, it's nice that we offer it now. Uh, and then night view assist is another new option uh, that to be honest, when it came out, I wasn't quite sold, but after using it, I like it a lot. It works very, very well. Um, and then lane change assist, that is uh, blind spot warning. So most people will take that. We, we see it as pretty much a must have option now. We put it on everything we'd have in stock. And then um, lane keep assist is the one that will actually tug the steering wheel to put you back in your lane if you leave. We haven't seen that one uh, be quite as popular with, um, with our customers, but it is an option if you like it. And then we get to the um, various kind of adaptive cruise and more, um, more driver aid stuff here. So uh, the adaptive cruise as recently as a couple of years ago wasn't very popular. We didn't have it on too many of our cars. Now we put it on almost everything because people are really, uh, they've come to expect that. So. And that's the one that will allow you to set your following distance from the car in front. And if they break with that system, uh, the vehicle will automatically break to maintain your set gap. So for most of our inventory, we'll take that box and, and kind of leave it there. But if you do want a little bit more intensive driver aid stuff, there's a couple of other options uh, like this one, which gives you the adaptive cruise control with the emergency stop and with the lane keep assist or there is the full InnoDrive system, which then uses more kind of cameras and radar uh, to not, you know, it's not a self-driving system. Our cars are still built to be driven. We are a sports car company, even though we sell a whole lot of SUVs. So some people are really um, getting on board with the InnoDrive stuff, but uh, not as many. So we we're, we're tend to stick with our inventory to more of, uh, of just the standard adaptive cruise stuff, but there is more advanced technology available if you want it. Uh, and then comfort access is so you can just touch the door handle to unlock it and keep your key in your pocket to, to um, start the car. So we'll put that on pretty well everything. Um, and then into interior, the heated windscreen. So it used to be, we did have that option, but it was very um, unpopular, I would say, because you could really see the heating element in the glass of, of the windshield. Uh, now they've, they've kind of gone for a different design, so you don't see that anymore. Uh, so you can tick that box without it actually impacting your visibility. Um, and then uh, an interesting note here. So the compass display, let's tick that box for a second. And then you'll see this pop up on the dash. Now, in this case, that is a compass. And if I turn that off, the compass goes away. Now, without that, you have a compass on the screen anyways. But the point I'm, I'm trying to make is uh, that the photo here on the configurator, this is, this is where it's not entirely accurate because Canadian models actually will always have an analog clock there unless you swap it out for the compass or for the sport chrono package. But there will actually always be a clock there, even if it doesn't show visually uh, on the configurator here. Um, and then driver memory package. So if you have the 14-way or 18-way seat, you don't need to tick that box because it already comes with that seat automatically. But if you have the eight-way seat, that's when you would tick the driver memory to, uh, to have that with that standard seat. Um, and then scrolling down from there, uh, seat heating front and rear. So actually front heated seats are standard. You're just adding the rear seat heat when, when you press that button. And then 
Um, some other important stuff here. So a lot of this is self-explanatory. We can dive into it more in one of our other videos, uh, but I want to get to some of the kind of the trickier stuff, uh, like the smoking package, the most commonly misunderstood option uh, in our lineup. Uh, people will often breeze through it saying, I'm not a smoker, I don't care. Um, but most people uh, who do option it aren't smokers either. What it actually does, if you look at this section right here, you have this open space, which can be useful just left open. But if we select the smoking package, it puts a lid on that space and gives you what is technically an ashtray in there, but most people will just use for coins. So if you like that cleaner look, select the smoking package. If you prefer to leave that open, don't. Zero cost either way, uh, but the smoking package too will vary a little bit depending which car you're looking at. Cayennes and McCann's do basically the same thing, but it's different in a 911 or a Panamera. So uh, take a close look at what smoking package actually means uh, before you decide either to tick that box or not. Um, Scrolling down from there, again, pretty standard stuff. You can change your seatbelt color to whatever you want. Uh, lots of interesting stuff, but fairly basic. Um, other options here, that's all pretty self-explanatory stuff. You know, you can wrap just about anything in, uh, in leather. And again, we can dive more in depth into that at another time. Uh, interior trim, carbon trims. Um, one thing I do always note though is, you know, you can do, for example, actually, let's see if we can show it in aluminum. So you can do the brushed aluminum trim and that will change your trim here, but you know what uh, material is your door sill, right? It may just be plastic. It may already be aluminum as standard. It may be, um, it may be that if you select, for example, if I go back down to carbon, well now you have this carbon trim here, which is great. It looks cool, but now your door sill is aluminum. So you then want to tick and make sure you're also getting the carbon door sill uh, to match or not if you don't care about it, but do consider what's already there so that if you do want to match up all your little trimmings, you, you can do that. Um, and I'll show you how in just a sec. Uh, so then we get to audio and communication. So you've got a few different sound options. 90% um, ish of our customers will go with the Bose. It's quite a good system uh, and a considerable upgrade over the standard system, which I tell people, you know, if you're just listening to talk radio, that's fine. Stick with the basic one. But if you do care about music and want a little bit more depth of sound, go with the Bose. But the Burmester um, is a pretty costly upgrade, worthwhile if you're a real audiophile and listen to uncompressed files and, and have uh, that depth of sound in your recordings. If you don't, if you tend to just get music from, you know, listening to the radio or from iTunes, you're not going to get the full benefit of the Burmester. So I don't recommend it. Uh, I would say the Bose is, is the better one to go with. And then uh, the six disc changer. So there is no uh, disc drive otherwise, unless you select that option. So if you do listen to CDs, make sure you select that. And then the smartphone compartment, you do need that option to get inductive charging. So if that's important to you, make sure that you tick that box. Uh, and then down here, we'll get into some equipment accessories, uh, some of which we already build into the pricing of, of our cars. So all of our cars will come with all season mats and, uh, and a cargo liner. So you don't need to actually tick those boxes in here. Um, and then at the bottom, this is an important section a lot of people don't notice, and that is the standard features and the technical data. So I mentioned earlier, you know, make sure you see what material your door sills are, or when you're comparing with other models, you know, what equipment is, is standard there to get a better sense of what you're paying for in that price difference. If you click standard features, you can scroll through and see what was already on the car. You know, sometimes you're looking for a box, like, you know, where do I tick to get Apple CarPlay? Well, it's actually going to be listed on the standard features list. Um, you just may not have realized that that list was down there at the very bottom. Uh, so that's an important spot to look at. And then finally, now that I've gone through and ticked some boxes, I'm going to come back up to the top of the configurator. Okay, so let's try first the premium package. So now it'll tell me if I decide to add that. It'll gain me the panoramic roof. Well, I've already selected that. The power steering plus and the auto dimming mirrors, which I hadn't. Uh, it'll give me the lane change assist, which I already had. Comfort access, I already had. And I already had the 14 way seat and the bows, uh, but it will take away my matrix LEDs, uh, but it will save me $3,000, but it takes away those matrix, which, which I want. So I don't want to do that. Maybe the premium plus will make more sense. So let's try that. It'll give me a lot of the same stuff the premium package did, adding the heated seats front and rear in the four zone climate and keeps the matrix, 
keeps the bows, that's all good, and still saves me $240. So I'm gaining a few things and saving some money there. So yes, I will accept those changes. And that's where it's worth seeing what you want and then coming back to see which package makes sense. Uh, and then let's try it as well with the assistance package. So in this case, we hadn't selected the surround view or the night vision. It's also giving us inno drive and heads up display, but it's taking away the cost for the just standard adaptive cruise that I'd selected. So now we're getting all of that for you know 4,800. Well, if I selected those individually, it would have been a lot more than that, but do I actually want all of that? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure I do, so I'll just say cancel. Won't do that package. Um, and then that's my configuration. Now, what I would recommend is once you're done there, you can click over to summary, and that's gonna list everything that you've kind of put together on, uh, on the car and, uh, and give you the, the price on the bottom. But what you can do at this stage is at the bottom here, it says generate Porsche code. So if you click that, it will in a second here, pop up a, a code that is your configuration. So then with that code, there it is. You can email that in to us if you already have a sales consultant or just to us in general. Um, and then we can pull up your build kind of where you left off. And then we can answer any questions you might have or offer some recommendations based on, you know, options that may be worthwhile that you've maybe overlooked or stuff that, you know, can be nice to have, but maybe not be worthwhile based on the rest of your configuration. So um, that can be a great tool and a great starting point, you know, if, um, if it's not totally complete, which it often isn't, right? Many of our customers will go through many times tweaking the configuration before it's final. And uh, the last thing I'll mention too is when you do order a vehicle, in most cases, you know, you can get your code, you can get that configuration, kind of built in and um, send it in, place that order, and you still have a window of time uh, where you can make a few last minute changes before the order actually locks. So when you do um, you know, sit down with us uh, and order your car, we'll give you that date as well. So you don't have to have everything dialed in 100% uh, before you actually order that car. So um, I hope this has been a valuable process for you. I hope it's answered some of your questions about the configurator. Do reach out with any other questions that, uh, that you might have for us. Uh, and as I say, send in your codes and, uh, and we're happy to, uh, to kind of help uh, in your in your process. Um, as I mentioned as well, we will do some other videos that go a little bit more in depth on the specific models. Uh, if you have a specific model you'd like us to go through and kind of run down and explain some stuff, uh, let us know. We, we'd be happy to, uh, to kind of take requests. So again, I hope that was helpful and thanks very much for watching.